What's going on guys? It is TJ back again with Gold Label Sports. In today's video, we will be answering another highly requested topic, which is, is sports card flipping still possible and is it still profitable? I'll be giving you guys my top five kind of tips and tricks to look out for um, and you know what to uh, be aware of uh, when it comes to you know flipping sports cards and if it's still possible so first things first if you are new please consider subscribing we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers we are almost there and I think we'll actually beat you know beat that number by 2022 the start of 2022 which is awesome so if you are new please consider subscribing would love to have you a part of the community and first things first with this topic guys Number one, number one. Um, in my opinion, sports card flipping is pretty dead in terms of the profit margins that you can make for cards. Unless you guys have a super secret, you know, super secret dealer, whatever supplier that's giving you cards at 75% um, below market rate, especially in the modern population, um, you guys are not gonna be making you know, much high profits in those. Profits really lying in vintage right now when it comes to sports cards and vintage when it comes to Pokemon cards, um, sports right now, even you know the 90s and uh, stuff like that. You know those cards are great, but you know a lot of people are thinking that base cards from the 90s are still profitable. Um, no, um, unless you guys are getting like I said, these cards are really low rates. Um, you have to be focusing on the rare inserts, the low population cards. The cards that have great eye appeal of, you know, the legends, right? Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, Hakeem Olajuwon, Magic Johnson, um, all those guys. Um, those are the guys that you guys should be focusing on. And, um, you know, those cards are always going to stay true to their value and hold value throughout the years. More modern, kind of the 2000 era, obviously LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant, and all of those guys as well. Usually, you know, the, the modern sports card population has fell into obviously you know the the inflation population which uh, means that you know these newer cards are just printed at mass rates besides serial number cards and uh, certain parallels but i mean they're they're produced at mass rates where it's you know unless you're getting rare 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 cards every single pull which you're not in these retail products um you know you're not you're not going to see much profit but um there is cure for this if you really follow you know four or five simple strategic points, which is you should be having an outlook on sports cards investing um, through a generational wealth perspective, which means you should be looking into the long term, one to two to three to six to 20 to 50 years, if you stay in the you know the hobby that long, but you should be looking to, to literally center your portfolio around, portfolio around generational wealth. Buying cards that are $500, $600, $700 in value in some cases. And then, you know, if you want to flip them in a year, right, when they go up, then do that. But don't think you're going to flip some of these cards in a month, all right, in two months. It's very rare unless you find that ideal buyer that just swoops on in and says, hey, I want to buy this card for three, four hundred dollars you know, over what you've paid if they give you a quote. Um, I, I, that's happened to me with some of the cards that I have now. And um, you know, it's great, great feeling that you, you, you hold on. So I recommend holding on to your cards as long as possible. And then when it's a season for selling, like I explained in my last video, that's when you try and flip your cards. If the market is right, if you're you know, trying to time that market as best as possible. So to answer it overall, um, sports card flipping is dead when it comes to modern cards. Um, I think there's still a place for vi more vintage cards or rare cards with low pops, crazy inserts and rare parallels. I think those are like the focus that you guys should be at, especially in the modern age and vintage age. Um, there's still a place, but you will not be able to flip base cards anymore. So that is completely done. All right. Um, so let's, you know, kind of talk about kind of the generational, um, the long-term wealth strategies behind this, right? So obviously flipping a card is buying it for a lower than market value. And then when it's time to sell, we sell it for higher for profit, right? Um, I personally only will flip a, you know, a lower end card if the profit margin is anywhere from 40 to $50. I make about 40 to $50 a card when I sell um, per base card, uh, modern cards. 
um, X was Z. That was my strategy, you know, when it was, you know, applicable. Right now, my strategy is, you know, selling cards that I've had for longer periods of time now, right? Six to eight months, flipping them, right? Taking some, some, some margin, some profit, really good profit, um, and some revenue back in, right? But also some cards I'm selling to fund my next big purchase. A lot of people actually don't do that. They kind of cut and run and think that, you know, they can't kind of leverage the cash, leverage the equity uh, within the card. And essentially the equity within the card would be, you know, the value inside of the card that obviously you won't be able to see until you sell it because, um, you know, the cash isn't obviously visible until you actually have it in your bank account. So when you sell that card, you pull that equity out of the card, the card is now gone. Um, you are able to then take that sale, take that revenue, um, cut it right into kind of three. So all the cards that you sell, this is what I do. All the cards that I sell at one time, let's say it's 10, 20 cards over a three month period, right? So I take, you know, obviously stuff that I make, the revenue of it, okay, the revenue, that's about 20 to 30% of, you know, that I take it, I keep it. Then I go and I say, okay, you know, I made this, right? This is how much the card is worth. I take, you know, how many, you know, cards that I sold, that value, I take the 30 to 40% of that and I save it up, right? I save it up to put into other cards that are gonna increase the value of my collection, right? Then, right, I have the cards that, you know, are not meant to be sold yet. That's usually 10 to 20% that's left. Um, those cards usually take a little bit longer to sell, and if they do take a little bit longer to sell, it's not time. So I pull that 10 to 20 percent, you know, off eBay, pull it off eBay, pull it off wherever I'm selling from, and I just wait a little longer and do some more research. All right. So as you guys can see, 70 to 80 percent of that kind of you know strategy I'm using to obviously make revenue, invest into higher cards, right and just move inventory around because you want to keep liquid liquidity going. You always want cash coming in, right? And you always want to be leveraging your cash to, you know, create net worth, right? Um, that's kind of where the generational term comes from is, you know, net worth is generational wealth. So generational wealth is like, you know, me, my family, who, you know, whoever's, you know, most important in life are good, right? And then they're kind of, you know, kids are good, right? So you want to create, you know, generational wealth that way, because I, like I said, I've said many stories on this channel that people have literally, you know, invested in collectibles for, let's say 30 to 40 years, right? And then they, you know, the buy the, buy the higher ends or stuff that they think may go up in the future, right? They hold it for 30 years, 40 years. And you know, they create generational wealth because then they'll have an appraiser come out and they'll be like, oh, wow, you know, so-and-so, your um, collection is worth two million, three million. I've heard it for, for years now, ever since I started where, you know, people have just like secret collections that they didn't know, but now obviously sports cards has come mainstream. And now, you know, a lot of people have the knowledge that it takes to really build true portfolios that create generational wealth. Sports cards is a long-term investment now, guys. It has changed from a short-term thing to a long-term thing, and that's actually great news because you put, you know, sports cards in the same category as, you know, stocks, real estate, and now even crypto is coming, you know, crypto is coming into the picture as an investment, kind of an, an asset that you can use to increase your net worth. So sports cards, honestly, in my opinion, is on that level. I've seen crazy sales. People create crazy valuable portfolios um, off of just, you know, taking a chance and doing the research and, and you know, taking risks, calculated risks that pay off. Um, so, you know, sports card flipping is not a calculated risk in some aspect when you're talking about um, population inflation with these modern cards, base cards from the 90s and stuff like that, it just doesn't work out anymore. So you really have to make sure you, if you're going to flip that the strategy is in place, you're getting good deals, you're buying low, selling high when it's time, and you're not, you know, rushing the process. Um, everything great takes a lot of time, a lot of research, a lot of effort, and it's not going to come, you know, just like that. 
before, you know, the, the average duration of like good flips was, you know, every month, every three months. Now we're looking at like six to eight months before you really, you know, make that next move. And um, if you, you know, are doing these things the right way, you know, every, like I said, every four to six months, you're looking at your portfolio saying, okay, I can take these cards and I can sell them and move them into higher cards for, you know, higher value cards. Then, you know, right, the cards become, you, your cards become higher in trade value, higher in cash value, you have more leverage within your portfolio and you're not, you know, wasting as much money. And let's say you do have a, a, a loss, right? They're not as, they're not as deep, okay? So, um, you know, those are kind of three huge things to kind of, um, you know, really grab onto if you're in the sports card flipping kind of mindset is, you know, flipping is basically done if you don't have the right strategies in place through really looking at it through a long-term perspective and investing in cards that are, you know, vintage, rare, rare inserts, low pop, um, crazy, you know, rare parallels and all that too. So stay away from base cards flipping, try and flip you know, those other, you know, subsets of cards. So this is TJ with Gold Label Sports, guys. I hope you guys, you know, have uh, found some value out of this video through the financial perspective that, you know, I'm giving with the tips and tricks. And um, if you guys do, like I said, like, comment, uh, subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Be on the lookout for announcements regarding the Christmas um, giveaways. And, uh, you know, it's gonna be a Gold Label Sports Christmas, and I can't wait to give back to all of you for all your support. So we will see you guys in the next one.